So now this kind of gets into the dealer's choice of what you want to keep in your kitting kit. But I like to keep a few different pharmaceuticals and interventions um, in my kitting kit in the worst case scenario. The point is I buy them and I hope to heck I don't have to use them. All of these purchases were made under the advisement and um, guidance of my vet. So some of the uh, drugs that we use for goats are actually off label, which means that they're not used for um, they're not labeled for use in goats. So you do have to work with your veterinarian to get their permission, their guidance, and have that off label usage advice. Um, it's also just really helpful because sometimes by intervening, we can actually make things worse. So what I have here are just a few examples of what I like to keep on hand. And again, these choices were made with the guidance of my farm's veterinarian. So the first thing that we've got here are some single use syringes of varying sizes. You'll see that there's um, a 10 ml as well as a 6 ml. Uh, these can be used to give um, drugs, drugs via an injection, injection typically intermuscularly subcutaneous, which would mean under the skin. Um, I've also used these before to actually help feed a kid. So um, you could milk the dough, get some colostrum, and use these syringes to help get a small amount of colostrum into that kid. Um, and then some needles, again, work with your veterinarian to decide what types of needles, what size um, are gonna be the most useful for your farm and for your operation. I keep these in a coffee can. Uh, to keep them safe and from rolling around in my kid kit. The next thing that I have on hand is actually an IV system. So again, I absolutely would not recommend having this for a beginner, but if you're working with your veterinarian, you feel comfortable doing IVs, it can be useful to have on hand. So you'll see that there's some um, hypodermic needles. These are needles that are specially designed for IVs and an IV tube. The IV tube um, has one ending for the needle, one ending for um, the funnel, and then you put whatever type of solution you are using as an IV into the funnel, and you can get it into that goat quickly. But again, this isn't anything that I would recommend doing without the guidance of your vet. Some of the things that we administer IV as needed include calcium and dextrose. So sometimes what can happen is animals can get imbalances in trace minerals um, and low blood sugar in the case of dextrose while they're kidding. These are just from various diseases that would be a whole nother two hour class to go over. But for example, we use the calcium solution if they get something called hypocalcemia or milk fever. Basically, um, the calcium levels drop to the point that the animal might be shaking, be very lethargic, um, and she can die quickly if she's not treated. So I keep some liquid calcium on hand. Dextrose is a sugar solution essentially, um, and it works well for when goats get something called ketosis. It's very rare, but it's helpful if your vet recommends it to keep on hand. Some other things that I keep on hand are uh, kale and pectate. Pectin, it'd be similar to Pepto-Bismol that you would use as a human. Sometimes animals um, in labor can get diarrhea and it can cause them to dehydrate really quickly. Keeping this on hand can help prevent that if needed under the guidance of your vet. So the next drug that you should probably um, definitely work with your vet to consider using is actually just plain old aspirin. Uh, this can be really helpful, especially if a doe has a really tough kidding. She might be in pain, there might be swelling, um, and it is just a really helpful tool similar to using it in humans. Um, as long as you're following the label guidelines, it's safe to use and it can be really effective. This is a small balling gun that we can use to give this. You put the bolus of aspirin in here, so the pill of aspirin, um, work with your veterinarian to learn the technique, gently place this into the animal's throat and you're able to give them that pill. So I just keep these on hand to have. Um, the next thing is some type of an antibiotic. Again, this would only be under the use of your, or under the discretion of your vet. Sometimes, especially with tough kittings where we might have had to perform an inner uterine exam, there might be tears. Um, they can be really susceptible to an infection called metritis, which is an infection of their uterine lining. Having an antibiotic on hand, um, your vet, for example, might recommend that in any case of a tough kidding, you just give them preemptively um, at one dose of an antibiotic to help ward off any type of infection. And then finally, bag bomb. So sometimes um, there can be sores and tears along the vagina and bag bomb will help with that. And then they can 
uh, does can also get udder sores and using this um, can be a way to help soothe those sores.